Last time, we talked about the different points of view. This time, we're going to talk about the pronouns you use if you're writing in the first person point of view. Ano mga exceptions niyan? Ano mga rules? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there! Thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is the first video that you're watching from my channel, I make educational and motivational content. So if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Now, like I said in the intro, kanina, we're going to talk about the pronouns that you use first person point of view. Uh, ano din yung mga special cases? Bakit yung I am, I, I am, at hindi I is? Ano yung mga kailangan natin tandaan para hindi tayo magkamali when we're writing? But before we do that, just a quick little plug. If you want to help support uh, this channel and our cause to democratize education in the Philippines, you can do that by helping us through our merch shop, sa shop.teamlaika.com. That's where we sell our hoodies, our shirts, uh, caps, and things that I designed for this team. I would love to see you wearing them, so if you ever use yung mga merch that you buy, please tag me in your photo so we can share them then in the next videos, okay? Thank you guys for your support, and uh, for those na hindi pa nakakabili, that's okay din. Wala namang pilitan. Um, I'm just really grateful that we get a bit, a bit of a lifeline, lalo na sa panahon ngayon na nasa gitna tayo ng crisis. It helps keep the lights on, uh, kumbaga, sa channel na ito. So maraming salamat sa inyo. And now that we have that out of the way, I'm going to switch over to my PC. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so ito na yung discussion natin on first person pronouns. Last week, we talked about yung pagkakaiba-iba ng first person point of view, sa second person point of view, at yung third person point of view. Pero dahil marami ang mga involved na mga conditions at salita, ibe-breakdown natin ito per set. Okay? So, dito man tayo sa first person pronouns. Now, a quick recap lang. We talked about this na rin dun sa parts of speech natin. If you haven't seen that video yet, ililink ko na lang din dito sa taas. Ang pronoun ay isang salita. It's a word that takes the place of a noun. When we talk about noun, sa Filipino yun yung pangalan. Name ng uh, itong bagay, uh, pangalan ng tao, pangyayari, lugar. So, itong noun na ito, kapag hindi na siya... Uh, inulit kung ano yung pangalan niya, uh, pinapalitan siya ng pronoun. Okay? Now, para makita natin siya in action, we have a sentence like this. Sabi, John is here. So, ang bida sa sentence, ang noun sa sentence na ito is John. Okay? This is your, your noun. Ito yung ating verb, yung is, yung ating be verb. Okay? Is siya kasi mag-isa lang si John. And now, kung papalitan ko siya ng pronoun, magiging he is here. Okay? So, instead of John, naging he na lang. Now, dito na papasok yung conflict minsan sa kung anong pronoun yung tamang gamitin. Sa Filipino rin kasi, sa atin, uh, yung siya, uh, whether babae yan o lalaki, we use siya. So, may gender na, na limitation, kung ano yung masculine na tinatawag nila na pronoun, feminine na pronoun, kung yan ba ay isa lang, ano ba yung part ng speech na paggamit sa kanya, siya ba ay subject or object, all of these considerations, pumapasok siya sa pronoun. Okay? Kaya minsan, uh, maraming nakakonfuse dito dun sa kung anong tamang pronoun na gamitin. Now again, na pag-uusapan natin ngayon would be yung first person pronoun muna. Ano yung mga yan? We have I, me, my, or mine, we, us, are or ours. Okay? Now, iisa-isahin natin sila. Now, here's a table of yung mga pronouns na pinag-usapan natin last time. Nakadivide lang siya sa kung ano yung point of view. First person, second person, tsaka third person. Pag-uusapan natin ngayon, yung first person lang. Pero madadagdagan natin siya ng mas specific na mga conditions. Pag-uusapan natin una, and again, this is just yung same information na doon kanina. Dinagdagan ko ng isa pang additional column. Kasi yung I, me, at my, at mine, lahat yan ay singular ang gamit. Ibig sabihin ng singular, single, again, pasintabi sa mga walang jowa dyan, ibig sabihin ikaw ay mag-isa. Kapag isa lang ang pinag-uusapan, I, me, my, or mine. Singular. Okay? Now, kapag plural na, higit na sa isa, dalawa o mas marami, ang ginagamit natin yung we, us, our, or ours. Okay? So, itong mga yan, ginagamit pag plural yung sitwasyon. Pag higit sa isang pinag-uusapan. 
at first person siya. Ibig sabihin, kasama ka dun sa conversation. Ikaw ang pinatutungkulan, ikaw rin ang nagsasalita. Okay? Now, ano yung mga iba pa pang mga um, cases na kailangan natin pag-usapan? Yung una, yung subjective na case. Or kapag ikaw ang subject sa sentence na ginagamit natin. Yung subjective case, gumagamit siya sa, ng I at we. I kapag singular and we kapag plural. And that is the value of this table that I created for you guys. So again, subjective, I, singular, subjective, plural is we. Na ano ba ibig sabihin ng subjective? Ang subjective, ang ibig sabihin niya lang ay ikaw ang tigagawa sa sentence. Okay? So sa I, kung dalawa kayo, okay, ang gagamitin ninyo ay we. Now, paano to magka-come into play sa actual na na totoong buhay. If you have a sentence like this, blank like art, ang gagamitin natin is we. We like art. Kung blank are here, dahil dalawa sila na nandyan, isa, dalawa, at kasama yung nagsasalita, so this will be we are, or kami ay nandito, we are here. Na kung ganito, do blank have to leave Again, dalawa sila, kasama yung nagsasalita sa, sa tinatanong. So, do we have to leave? Wala masyadong complications kapag we. It gets a little tricky kapag I yung pinag-uusapan. Now, yung I, ginagamit natin again, subject siya ng sentence at mag-isa lang siya. Hindi dalawa o higit pa yung pinag-uusapan. Now, babalikan natin yung sentence kanina, blank like art. Okay? Dahil ang I ay singular, okay? Ang rule kasi natin sa subject verb agreement, kapag um, singular dapat pag oh, isa lang pinag-uusapan, dapat ano, may s, may s yung verb. Pero if you notice, pag sinabi natin na I like art, hindi siya I likes art. Now, this is just something that you will need to remember. Ang I is special in a way kasi kahit isa lang ang pinatutungkulan, yung rule ng paglalagay ng S sa verb, okay, ay hindi sinusunod. I like art. Hindi I likes art. Okay? And again, you have to remember that. Yung iba kasi doon nagkakamali. So, I eat, I like, I love, hindi siya I loves. Kahit na sa ibang mga pronoun, uh, kapag isa lang, katulad doon, pag she, she is a singular pronoun, pero, third person, ang sinasabi natin ay, she likes art. Pero pag I, wala. Okay? Remember that. Another thing is this. Kapag sinabi ko na, blank, am here, di ba kanina yung we, we are here. Kasi are is a plural na be verb. Pero pag I ang ginagamit, it becomes I am here. Hindi rin siya, I is here. Okay? So again, hindi siya I likes. Hindi siya I is. I am. Always remember, kapag I, I am. Another thing na medyo tricky, and um, may video kasi ako on do, does, did sa questions. If you haven't seen that yet, ililink ko na lang din sa taas, no? Marami ang nagtatanong nun, bakit ganun? Now again, this is just another thing that you will need to remember. Kapag do at I ang kasunod, ganyan siya. Bakit ganun? Eh, hindi naman plural ang I. It's just the rule, okay? Dahil first person, again, medyo special si I. Hindi siya does I. Kahit na kung tutuusin yung does, ginagamit lang natin sa mga singular. Again, does she love me? Does she have to leave? Okay? I pa rin siya. So, do I have to leave? Now, now that we know this, at least may parang clue na tayo dun sa kung gano'ng special si I, no? Um, we have to remember all of these things. Again, kahit na mag-isa lang siya, do pa rin, hindi does. Now, another thing that we have to talk about is yung objective case. Yung objective case, ang ibig sabihin naman niya, hindi na ikaw ang tigagawa, ikaw na ang tigatanggap. Meron akong discussion on me, myself, and I. If you haven't seen that yet, i-link ko na lang din sa taas. At saka sa description box. Hinimay natin dun yung pagkakaiba ng I, me, at myself. Ngayon, ang pag-uusapan lang natin ay muna yung me, tsaka yung us naman. Now, kapag siya ay mag-isa, me. 
kapag ikaw ang tiga tanggap sa sentence ko. So, kapag nakalagay art likes blank, si art na now be, being a tao, kasi di ba minsan art is a name of a, a person, uh, si Tito Art is the dad of one of my uh, best friends, si Mama Pao. So, art likes me. Now, bakit art likes me? Kasi, tiga tanggap ka lang ng affection ni art. Okay? Hindi ikaw yung gumagawa nung action, nung ating verb. Okay? Now, ang clue rin natin dyan kasi ang uh, objective pronouns ay usually they come after the verb. So, kung ito yung verb natin or action natin, napapansin ninyo siya ay nahuhuli sa kanya. Hindi ka tulad nung subject na na ay kanina, yung ay naman ang nauuna. Diba? Kasi kung lalagay natin, ipagtatabi natin, kung ito ay ay, like art as in yung sining di ba you would notice ito yung verb baliktad sila na peso nauuna naman ngayon yung pronoun okay yan yung pag subjective pag objective nauuna kadalasan yung verb kung marami kayo okay dalawa sila it becomes us hindi we so kapag sinabi natin art likes blank hindi pwedeng art likes we art likes us Okay? So, again, kapag objective, plural, it's us. Now, yung third na case is yung possessive na tinatawag. Yung possessive case, it gets a little bit tricky din kasi sometimes napagpapalit ng tao yung my tsaka mine, yung our tsaka ours. Now, kailan siya nagiging uh, relevant? Kailan siya, siya ginagamit? Yan, pag-uusapan muna natin. Now, dito yung tayo sa possessive, no? Kapag, again, mag-isa lang siya, we call it mine. Kung ang sentence ay ganito, sabi, the art that art likes is blank. So, the art that art likes is mine. Okay? So, sa akin, ang art na gusto ni art, it's mine. Ano yung mine na yan? Yung art, yun yung pinag-uusapan dyan. Okay? Akin yung art na yun. Kapag dalawa naman ang may-ari, okay? Kasi yung possessive, ibig sabihin may pagmamay-ari, may aspeto na pag ikaw na yung owner nung pinag-uusapan. Kung marami, it becomes ours. Okay? So, the art that art likes is ours. Amen. Okay? Hindi na sa akin lang. Now, doon na again papasok. Eh, kailan nagiging our? Kailan nagiging my? Now, it's actually also called as a possessive determiner, no? Yung my at saka yung our. Ang trick dyan is noticing kung ano yung pwestuhan. Okay? Tinan nyo tong sentence na to. It says, art likes blank art. If you notice, kung ilalagay ko dito yung my, sa Filipino, gusto ni art, ang aking art, meron siyang pinatutungkulan. Katabi niya, yung word na art, which is yung pagmamayari. Nasusundan siya ng isa pang noun. Okay? So, it acts as a possessive determiner. Akin ang alin, yung art. Now, nagiging mine siya, the art, kunyari, the art that art likes is mine, kung hindi naman kadugtong yung pinatutungkulan. Okay? So, hindi nakasunod sa kanya. So, kapag my art, uh, my love, my heart, my room, my anything, kasunod yung kung ano man yung pinagmamayari mo, kahit minsan tao, di ba? My girlfriend, my boyfriend, my husband, my wife, my friend. Kung kasunod na kasunod yun, my. Okay? Now, kung dalawa naman na sila, okay, it becomes R. So, art likes, and then this time it's R, art. Now, again, you notice, ito yung pronoun, or ito yung uh, determiner, kasunod na kasunod niya rin yung noun na pinatutungkulan niya, yung kanilang art. Okay? Now, kanina, hindi yan nakasunod, so ang sabi nga, di ba, um, the art that art likes is ours. Kasi walang kasunod na noun yung are. Okay? Now, yun yung quick check to know kung are or ours ba dapat or kung my or mine ba dapat. Now, how do we um, try to simplify things? Here's something that I drummed up, no? So, while I was creating this lesson, gumawa ako ng flowchart. I know that you respond well dun sa mga previous lessons natin na may mga flowchart tayo. Pagdating sa ganito, yung do, does, did, yung is, are, was, where. So, I decided to create something then for pronouns. Now, the first question is, does this involve you? Kung ang sagot mo ay yes, ibig sabihin kasama ka, ikaw din ang pinatutungkulan, ikaw na nagsasalita, first person yung 
ating uh, point of view. Kung no ang sagot mo, dyan na magsistem yung third person point of view, tsaka second person point of view, which we'll talk about next week. Now, kung first person point of view, which we've already determined, ang next question would be, are you the doer, receiver, or owner? Now, bakit ganon? Doer kasi, or ikaw yung tigagawa, ibig sabihin nun, ano to, subjective, ikaw ang subject. So, tatanong mo ngayon, kung singular, gagamitin mo I. Kung plural, gagamitin mo we. Kung ikaw naman ay receiver or tigatanggap, ibig sabihin nun, objective, ang case. Kung singular, me. Kung plural, us. Kung owner ka naman, ang next question would be, does the noun follow? Kung nakasunod yung noun, doon sa yung pronoun na blank, na nawawala, you can use singular, my, kung plural, are. Kung hindi naman, if the noun doesn't follow, hindi naka-specify right after the blank, ang singular ay mine, ang plural are, ay ours. Now, let's use this in action, no? or let's uh, dive deeper dito. Again, every time, you can ask yourself if you're the doer, receiver, or owner. Kung doer ka, tas plural we. Kung owner ka, tapos the noun follows, hindi then it becomes ours. This is something that uh, hopefully can help you decide kung aling pronoun yung gagamitin. Para lang doon sa mga visual learners natin out there. Now, let's use it dito sa ganitong klaseng sitwasyon. May mga blank na kailangan natin punan. Sabi, Jeff and blank want to buy a house by the beach. That has always been blank dream. So, dalawa. Let's pull out yung ating chart, no? Okay, so now that we have the chart, balikan natin yung tano. Sabi, Jeff and Blank want to buy a house by the beach. So, uh, ang tanong dito, sino ba yung bibili or may gustong bumili ng bahay? Kasama ka ba doon? Okay, now of course, in this case, if a flowchart lang natin, gamitin natin yung kulay na purple. Are you the, ano siya, doer siya? Kasi gusto niya rin yung bumili ng bahay. Tapos, you have Jeff, the first person, and yung second person. So, ibig sabihin nun, we can use yung singular Jeff and I. So, yun yung first answer natin. Jeff and I want to buy a house by the beach. Now, yung next naman na blank, that has always been blank dream. Okay? So, tanong, dito, dito sa sentence ito, that has always been blank dream, ikaw ba ang tigagawa? Hmm, hindi. Pero, ikaw ang may-ari nung dream. So, ibig sabihin nun, dito sa babalik tayo sa are you the, this time you are the owner. Sa'yo yung dream na yon, Owner ng pangarap na yon. Now, does the noun follow? Tingnan natin. Ito yung noun, merong dream na kasunod, and it follows directly yung blank. So, yes, it follows. Pupunta tayo dito. Yes. Tapos, singular ba siya o plural? Now, dahil pangarap lang, uh, pangarap lang ito, hindi, naka, hindi masyadong nakalagay yung context. Pero, dun sa first sentence, meron kang Jeff and I want to buy a house by the beach. Dalawa naman sila na minention. Okay, you can choose. Depende sa kung anong gusto mo talaga sabihin sa sitwasyon na yon. Kung yan ay singular or plural. Now, kung gagamitin natin na isasama natin si Jeff dun sa pangarap, kasi pangarap niya rin yon, this becomes plural. Ang gagamitin natin ay or. Okay, so that has always been our dream. Kasi dalawa sila ngayong nangangarap. Kasi dalawa naman silang may gusto kanina. Okay? So, again, depende na yan sa paggamit mo. Ngayon, kung ang layuin mo ay gusto mong sabihin na gusto niyong bilin, pero ikaw lang talaga yung may gusto, then you could say that has always been my dream. Now, again, that is kind of yung ating workflow, yung flow ng utak natin when we select yung mga pronouns na yun. Um, hopefully, nakatulong yung chart sa inyo. But again, the more you practice, the faster it'll, it'll be. Um, magiging mas automatic to sa inyo. In cases, I feel it's helpful din na kung nagbabasa kayo or nagsusulat, kung magsa-second guess ka, balikan mo yung train of thought uh, para i-verify kung tama ba yung ginamit na pronoun. Okay? Now, it's your turn. I'm going to give you a quick quiz. Dinamihan ko yung blanks this time. Uh, pipili lang kayo nung sa tingin ninyong best na pronoun para doon sa sitwasyon. In this quiz in particular, specify ko na kung singular or plural yung um, pronoun. S kung singular siya. Kung nakalagay ganito, ibig sabihin plural siya. Just so, so uh, medyo mabawasan yung 
yung confusion natin sa anong gagamitin. Uh, and you can pick kung anong klaseng singular o at plural na pronoun yung gagamitin. Again, all of this dapat nasa first person point of view. Alright? And if you're ready with your pen and paper, your timer starts now. Let's see how you did. Okay? Alright, so ito yung ating paragraph. Pipili na natin kung yung best answer. Uh, wala nang space para dun sa chart kanina. Pero if you took a screenshot, you can use it then um, while taking the test the first time. And then balikan niyo after a few days. Uh, this time without the flow chart naman. Okay? Na dito, nakalagay kay blank. Dog's name is Haley. Now, singular daw siya. Now, kung singular siya, pinag-usapan yung dog... And medyo may, eto, dito na yung konteksto ng pagmamayari niya yung dog, no? So, ibig sabihin nun, ang pipiliin natin would be singular, possessive, at dahil kasunod yung dog, okay, kasunod siya mismo, hindi pwedeng mind dog. It now becomes my dog. So, my dog's name is Haley. Next, singular daw siya, tapos sabi, blank met her when she was about three weeks old. So, ano yung ginawa nito, yung verb na to, yung met? Siya ba yung gumawa? Okay? Now, siya yung gumawa kasi siya yung nag-meet dun kay Haley. So, ibig sabihin nun, this is a subject, tapos singular, I. I met her when she was about three weeks old. When blank picked her up, so again, ito na naman yung word na picked, ito naman yung action dun sa sentence na yan, the verb. So, sino ang nag-pick kay Haley? Yung nagsasalita, di ba? So, first person, singular, and again, subject. When I picked her up, she crawled into a spot near my elbow, gave a huge sigh, and fell asleep. Now, hindi ko na ito nalagyan ng blank, pero mapapansin nyo, meron ding my dito. Okay? And again, bakit? Kasi, ano yung kanyang pagmamayari? Yung kanyang elbow. Kasunod na kasunod lang din siya, no? So just a quick little tidbit dyan. And fell asleep. Now, that was the moment she stole blank heart. Okay? So, ano yun? Ninakaw ni Haley yung puso niya. Pagmamayari yun dito, ownership. My heart. Kasi singular. Tapos, kasunod na kasunod yung pinatutungkulan na noun na kanyang pagmamayari. Okay? Now, next. Blank was hers. 
Okay? So, singular, tapos, um, sino yung be verb? Ito kasi, ano rin to eh, uh, verb din to. So, ibig sabihin nun, sino yung, sino yung kay Haley? I. I was hers. And then, ang kasunod nun would be yung fact na, in turn, she was blank. Okay, ito na. Sino yung she si Haley? She was blank. Pagmamayari ko naman siya. Pero dahil hindi, walang kadugtong na noun, we can say she was mine. Hindi she was my. Okay? She was mine. Next, plural na to. Puro singular kanina ngayon, plural na. Blank knew that. So again, knew is the verb. Pare, dalawa kaming may alam. So this is we, kasi kayo yung gumawa. We knew. We knew that blank were meant to be together. So we have another be verb here. We were meant to be together. Plural lang pinag-uusapan. Next, she had her own set of fears and I had blank. So I had, mayroon din ako sariling set ko ng fears, ownership din siya, pero hindi nakasunod, so I had mine. Blank, we're both scared. Again, plural ito. Pareho kaming takot. So, this is action ito. Kami yung gumagawa. Kami yung takot. We were both scared. But, blank, we're together. So, again, this is another we. We were together. Magkasama kami. And uh, kami ay magkasama. And that made it better. Being together made, plural, blank, better. So, Tiga-tanggap na lang sila. Kasi ang action here, and this may be the part that's a little bit confusing for some, um, being together ang bida, ito yung gumawa nung made, so kayo ay tiga-tanggap lang nung pagiging better. So, being together made us better. This is blank story. Ito ay ang aming kwento. So, again, pagmamayari ito. So, this is our story. She is God's gift to singular me. Nagyala siya ng Diyos sa akin. Okay? Bakit? Kasi tiga-tanggap lang din ako nung regalo na yon. Hindi ako yung gumawa. Alright? So, yan yung sagot natin. My dog's name is Haley. I met her when she was about three weeks old. When I picked her up, she crawled into a spot near my elbow. This is true, by the way. I gave a huge sigh and fell asleep. That was the moment she stole my heart. I was hers. She was mine. We knew that we were meant to be together. She had her own set of fears and I had mine. We were both scared, but we were together, and that made it better. Being together made us better. This is our story. She's God's gift to me. Alright, so yan yung mga sagot natin. I hope you got all of these correctly. If you didn't, that's okay. I'll be posting more questions on my Instagram account then. Uh, if you don't follow me yet, follow me at Laika Maravilla on Instagram and at Team Laika naman for yung mga official na mga posts, updates, announcements for the team. At kung sakasakal kayo may TikTok, you can find me on TikTok at Team Laika for the math, English lessons, at iba pang mga educational content. And yung at Laika Maravilla naman for the motivational videos, advice, uh, real talk, and yung mga more personal stuff. Okay? See you guys online. Alright, I hope you learned something today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video with your friends. Sana nung mag-exam din sila. Dati mas marami tayong matutulungan. And as always, if you want to reach out to me directly, get the reviewers that I may join the online or library events. You can go to www.facebook.com slash Team Laika. And if you want to subscribe, subscribe na, hit that bell icon para hindi nyo mamiss yung mga susunod pa natin mga topics. Iisa-isahin natin yung ibang mga points of view at yung mga pronouns na pinag-uusapan or ginagamit doon. And I would hate for you to miss those. Thanks guys for watching and as we always say sa channel to, never stop learning. Adja-adja, kaya niyan. I'll see you in my next video and bye for now.